It's 530 and we are again devoting the next half hour to answering your coronavirus questions. Thanks for joining us everybody for our virtual town hall. I'm Michael Wooten and I'm Mary Alice Demler. Here's what's coming up on today's show. Stimulus payments. Yeah, oh. a lot of you are getting money deposited into your accounts. We'll go over what you need to know. And if we can, let's go back to that last shot because we're going to get everything out of order here if we don't. Um, kind of telling you what's coming up here on the show today. Mary Alice had mentioned uh, that we were talking about those stimulus payments, also masks in public. You know what? Let's just skip that and get to the things uh, that you need to know right now. We can tell you 35 nursing home residents uh, have been reported dead in Erie County since Monday. We got that update from the county executive uh, earlier today. Information on those deaths was sent to the state first, which is why we're seeing so many facilities reported at once. And number two, the number of worldwide confirmed cases of coronavirus topped 2 million today. And get this, New York State has one out of 10 of the cases worldwide. And number three, the IRS now has a feature online so that you can check the status of your stimulus payment. It's two days early, actually. We didn't think we were going to get that until Friday. We'll show you step by step how it works coming up. Well, that leads us into the first question about the stimulus. Now, this has been by far the biggest topic that you've asked about, especially now that direct deposits are happening. So right off the top, we want to go through what you need to know. Check your bank account. The IRS tweeted this past weekend saying the first economic impact payments have been deposited. If you make less than $75,000 a year, that means you get a $1,200 check. Couples who make less than $150,000 a year get $2,400. The amounts phase out the more money you make. Who's getting money first? People who opted for direct deposits for their tax refunds in 2018 or 2019. Paper checks will be mailed out starting early May. We've been getting a lot of questions from people who don't normally file taxes every year. You will automatically get a stimulus payment if you receive railroad retirement, Social Security retirement, disability, or survivor benefits. And if you have children under 17, you may be eligible for more money. If that's you, you'll need to file an additional form with the IRS. You can do that online. People who earn less than the minimum required to file tax returns need to send in that form too. It's easy to find all that on the IRS's website. And speaking of the website today, the IRS debuted this feature online so that people can actually check the status of their refunds. So you start at irs.gov and you click right there on the home page where it's red. Uh, it says get my payment. Now, once you do that, it takes you to a page that explains that you may need your 2018 or 2019 tax return. Then you click on the blue box that says get my payment. Takes you then to this page right here where it explains that the site is only for authorized use. And then finally, you're going to get to this page where you can put in your social security number, your date of birth, your street address and your zip code. And then you will be able to find out the status of your payment. Not bad, huh? We've had a lot of people ask us over the past 24 hours if something that they've seen online is true. A viewer said, I saw on Facebook that printed stimulus checks will be delayed because the president insists his name be printed on it. Can you verify that? Well, it is true that the president has directed the IRS to put his printed name, not his signature, on the memo line on the bottom left of those checks. As far as the bigger issue on whether or not that caused a delay, well, it depends on who you believe. Senior IRS officials told the Washington Post that this move, which was approved Monday, could slow down printing the checks. But then a Treasury spokeswoman said today, quote, economic impact payment checks are scheduled to go out on time and exactly as planned. There is absolutely no delay whatsoever. The first mailed checks should start going out before the end of the month, although all of them won't arrive for several months due to printing limitations. Well, the biggest news to come out of the governor's briefing today was his executive order requiring all New Yorkers to wear masks or other face coverings whenever they're out in public and you cannot socially distance yourself. Yeah, this is especially important for people to keep in mind when there are grocery stores, using public transportation. But even if you're just walking through an area where you might come in close contact with people, you need to be wearing this mask. Uh, we talked today with infectious disease expert Dr. Thomas Russo to get his take on this mandate from the state. I guess the question is, is it medically the right thing to be doing? 
Yeah, I am, uh, Michael, as you know, a huge fan of masks. I think it's a, a critical piece of our public health measures to decrease the spread of the virus. And I think it's going to be increasingly important uh, when we start to relax uh, uh, these public health measures uh, and try to get back to normalcy. I think widespread mask use is really going to help us uh, keep the lid on a resurgence of the virus. You would advise everyone, when should they be wearing a mask and when do they not need to wear a mask? So I think that everyone should wear a mask whenever they're going to encounter uh, another individual. Uh, even if they're going to encounter that individual maybe outside of the six foot zone, even if it's, you know, 12 or 24 feet, as you know, there's some controversy in terms of the distance uh, that infectious particles could spread. So I think it's better to be safe than sorry uh, on this issue. Hmm, that's an interesting take. The governor's executive order, by the way, uh, will go into effect in three days, giving people some time to adjust and maybe get masks if you don't already have them. Local police will eventually enforce it. Although Mary Alice, the governor said today, you know, they don't anticipate going out and certainly no one goes to jail. Maybe someone would eventually get a fine. That's right. And you know, you don't have to get an, a mask and N95. You can use a bandana that you have at home. And I know a lot of people are certainly making their own too. But uh, again, it's a measure that a lot of people didn't think they'd see. But now all the health experts are saying it's in our best interest. I believe everything Dr. Russo says, and I always <laughs> think he's very forthcoming with everybody here in Western New York, and he is a big fan of the masks. So there you go. I will be too. <laughs> On to our next question now. For people who have recovered from COVID and have these antibodies we keep hearing about, can't scientists use that to not only inject people suffering, but also develop drugs? That seems logical to me. Well, yeah, we've heard a lot about using those antibodies to help treat other people, but what about using them to develop medications? Here's Dr. Anish Mehta with Emory University. He's part of a team that's administering antibody tests right now. If we figure out which patients have the highest quality antibodies, then we can use that information not only to potentially make a therapeutic such as convalescent plasma that's being talked about a lot, but also potentially concentrate those antibodies into a product. But down the road, importantly, make synthetic antibody um, that can be used in patients. And that has been done in multiple other infections. And very importantly, that information can be used to help us develop or uh, further enhance the vaccines that are being developed currently. So there's a lot of avenues that this data is going to be used in. I have to admit, until we got that question, I had never really thought about it beyond this convalescent um, treatment that they're talking about. Yeah, it's really fascinating. And to know that, you know, some of the infectious disease research is going on right here at Roswell Park. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's exciting to think that, you know, there really are possibilities and potential uh, for attacking this virus and getting ahead of it, but they do all take time. Yeah, time that is in short supply right now, mm -hmm. no doubt. All right, let's get now to uh, our next. Yes, I have a question that nobody has brought up. Does, uh, if you have coronavirus, say on a frozen dinner and you put it in the freezer, will freezing kill it or weaken it? That's my question. Can freezing kill coronavirus? Thank you. I want to thank that gentleman for the question. Now we have not seen this specific question answered by the CDC or the World Health Organization, but it has been addressed by the American Federation of Scientists. The nonprofit pointed to a 2010 study that looked at viruses similar to this novel coronavirus and found lower temperatures actually help them survive longer. Yeah, they suspect the virus could survive being frozen. At a minimum, there's no proof that freezing a food would actually kill the virus on the packaging or the food itself. On the other hand, cooking food and getting it above 160 degrees does kill the virus. So the bottom line, though, is that when you're handling almost anything, remember the basics. Don't touch your face and, of course, wash your hands afterward. Again, a lot of we don't know about this virus. They're learning more every day, but it seems like the virus likes the cool temperatures a lot better than the really hot temperatures. So if your food's going from the freezer to the microwave, you may be OK. Yeah, doesn't really work for ice cream or popsicles much, <laughs> but well, and the good thing, too, is the you know, the CDC has told us um, that 
frozen foods, for instance, when they're transported and stuff, it's not likely that the virus would live on them right. in the packaging. Um, but people are extra cautious about all this and for obvious reasons. Yeah, you, absolutely they are already. Well, most of your questions have been about the coronavirus itself or the economic impact of it. We've also heard from you, many of you asking about issues at home. Many teachers are still hard at work, but parents are also more involved in schooling at home. A viewer said this on social media. I'm having a really hard time figuring out when to do schoolwork, when to do my work, when my husband does his work. It is chaos 24 seven and I feel like we aren't getting anything done. Well, if that is happening to you, here is the advice from homeschooling expert Laura Hernandez, who runs a site called mamasystems.net. I find that so often we're just kind of going from thing to thing and we're trying to get kids organized, work a little bit. And so I find if we schedule things out, so if we could just say from eight to noon, we're going to do schoolwork and that's it. At noon, we're going to be done with schoolwork. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to be doing my job. And I'm going to work this time to this time. I'm going to schedule my meetings then. So you can kind of tag team who is in charge of kids and who's doing what. We can also find activities for kids and kind of set the expectations of, hey, I have to work. And so these are the things you can do right now. You can watch this movie. You can go play outside in the playground. Whatever those things are, list them out and be very clear in your expectations for what needs to happen. And while the first few weeks may be kind of a struggle, I find that the more we are consistent with our expectations, the more kids know, okay, th these are the boundaries I have and this is what I can do during this time. Definitely heard from a lot of parents struggling through all this. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's a great tip to have that structure that normally is mandated, you know, for you either at school or at work. Yeah. And then, you know, folks like a lot of folks like home to be unstructured because of what they're normally experience at their job or school. So you really have to bring part of that to home just in order to be efficient. Yeah, no, that's a great point. Flipping the script on that mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, everybody knows Buffalo is a big sports town, right? So a lot of you have asked a question that we haven't really been able to answer. Uh, one of you said, will we even have the upcoming seasons for the Bills and Sabres and other teams? And when this starts back, how will it be different? Well, we don't know, uh, I'm sorry, if we don't know now, when will we? So a lot of people have been wondering that. And Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's leading infectious disease expert, kind of addressed this. He talked with Peter Hamby of Snapchat. Millions of people are watching this. Here's what Dr. Fauci said. There's a way of doing that. Nobody comes to the stadium. Put them in big hotels, you know, wherever you want to play. Keep them very well surveilled, and namely a, a surveillance, but have them tested like every week and make sure they don't wind up infecting each other or their family and just let them play the season out. I mean, people say, well, you know, you, you, you can't play without spectators. Well, I think you probably get enough buy-in from people who are dying to see a baseball game, particularly me. I'm living in Washington. We have the world champion Washington Nationals. You know, I want to see them play again. Well, that interview again was part of a longer conversation Dr. Fauci had with Snapchat as part of the Good Luck America series. It's available now on Snapchat and part two gets released tomorrow. Uh, I know, Michael, I think a lot of people are just shuddering to think that, you know, we can enjoy our favorite pastimes, you know, whether that's going to a stadium and enjoying a hot dogs, sitting outside watching a game, but life is going to change, you yeah. know, for the foreseeable future anyway. And you think of the trade off, we may get sports back in a way, mm -hmm. but not be able to watch them in person or certainly not as many people and not at first. Right. It may be different. We'll yeah. see.